God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss, and pour contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. The vain delights that charm me most, I sacrifice them to his blood. Rise up, Lord, and come to my aid. O Lord, plead my cause against my foes. Fight those who fight me. Take up your buckler and shield. Arise to help me. O Lord, say to my soul, I am your salvation. But my soul shall be joyful in the Lord and rejoice in his salvation. My whole being will say, Lord, who is like you, who rescue the weak from the strong and the poor from the oppressor? Lying witnesses arise and accuse me unjustly. They repay me evil for good. My soul is forlorn. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rise up, Lord, and, and come, come to my aid. aid. All-powerful Lord, stand by me and defend me. When they were sick, I went into mourning, afflicted with fasting. My prayer was ever on my lips, as for a brother, a friend. I went as though mourning a mother, bowed down with grief. Now that I am in trouble, they gather. They gather and mock me. They take me by surprise and strike me, and tear me to pieces. They provoke me with mockery on mockery, and gnash their teeth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All-powerful Lord, stand, stand by, by me and, and defend me. me. My tongue will speak of your goodness all the day long. O Lord, how long will you look on? Come to my rescue. Save my life from these raging beasts, my soul from these lions. I will thank you in the great assembly. Amid the throng I will praise you. Do not let my lying foes rejoice over me. Do not let those who hate me unjustly wink eyes at each other. O Lord, you have seen. Do not be silent. Do not stand afar off. Awake, stir to my defense, to my cause, O God. Let there be joy for those who love my cause. Let them say without end, Great is the Lord who delights in the peace of his servant. Then my tongue shall speak of your justice all day long of your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My tongue will, will speak, speak of your goodness all the day long. Turn back to the Lord your God. He is kind and merciful. From the book of Exodus, Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and procure lambs for your families, and slaughter them as Passover victims. Then take a bunch of hyssop, and dipping it in the blood that is in the basin, 
sprinkle the lintel and the two doorposts with this blood. But none of you shall go outdoors until morning, for the Lord will go by, striking down the Egyptians. Seeing the blood on the lintel and the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not let the destroyer come into your houses to strike you down. You shall observe this as a perpetual ordinance for yourselves and your descendants. Thus, you must also observe this right when you have entered the land which the Lord will give you as he promised. When your children ask you, what does this right of yours mean? You shall reply, this is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord, who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. When he struck down the Egyptians, he spared our houses. Then the people bowed down in worship, and the Israelites went and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord slew every firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh on the throne to the firstborn of the prisoner in the dungeon, as well as the firstborn of the animals. Pharaoh arose in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was loud wailing throughout Egypt, for there was not a house without its dead. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Leave my people at once, you and the Israelites with you. Go and worship the Lord as you said. Take your flocks, too, and your herds as you demanded, and be gone, and you will be doing me a favor. The Egyptians likewise urged the people on to hasten their departure from the land. They thought that otherwise they would all die. The people, therefore, took their dough before it was leavened, in their kneading bowls wrapped in their cloaks on their shoulders. The Israelites did as Moses had commanded. They asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. The Lord indeed had made the Egyptians so well disposed toward the people that they let them have whatever they asked for. Thus did they despoil the Egyptians. The children of Israel shall put the blood of the Lamb on the doorposts and lintels of their houses. This blood will be a sign to you. You have been redeemed by the precious blood of Christ, the Lamb without blemish. This blood will be a sign to you. From the Mirror of Love by St. Aelred, Abbot. The perfection of brotherly love lies in the love of one's enemies. We can find no greater inspiration for this than grateful remembrance of the wonderful patience of Christ. He, who is more fair than all the sons of men, offered his fair face to be spat upon by sinful men. He allowed those eyes that ruled the universe to be blindfolded by wicked men. He bared his back to the scourges. He submitted that head which strikes terror in principalities and powers to the sharpness of the thorns. He gave himself up to be mocked and reviled and at the end endured the cross, the nails, the lance, the gall, the vinegar, remaining always gentle meek and full of peace. In short, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb before the shearers he kept silent and did not open his mouth. Who could listen to that wonderful prayer, so full of warmth, of love, of unshakable serenity? Father, forgive them, and hesitate to embrace his enemies with overflowing love. Father, he says, forgive them. Is any gentleness, any love lacking in this prayer? Yet he put into it something more. It was not enough to pray for them. 
he wanted also to make excuses for them. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They are great sinners, yes, but they have little judgment. Therefore, Father, forgive them. They are nailing me to the cross, but they do not know who it is that they are nailing to the cross. If they had known, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. Therefore, Father, forgive them. They think it is a lawbreaker, an imposter claiming to be God, a seducer of the people. I have hidden my face from them, and they do not recognize my glory. Therefore, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. If someone wishes to love himself, he must not allow himself to be corrupted by indulging his sinful nature. If he wishes to resist the promptings of his sinful nature, he must enlarge the whole horizon of his love to contemplate the loving gentleness of the humanity of the Lord. Further, if he wishes to savor the joy of brotherly love with greater perfection and delight, he must extend even to his enemies the embrace of true love. But if he wishes to prevent this fire of divine love from growing cold because of injuries received, let him keep the eyes of his soul always fixed on the serene patience of his beloved Lord and Savior. He surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. He bore the crimes of many and prayed all the while for sinners. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. He bore the crimes of many and prayed all the while for sinners. Let us pray. Lord, may our observance of Lent help to renew us and prepare us to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.